these standout prospects never managed to live up to the hype. He couldn't throw the football accurately. I don't understand why people couldn't see that. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst NFL draft picks. Organizations kept employing him, almost saying to him, okay, Lawrence, it's okay, you know, you can be a thug. For this list, we're looking at those players who were selected high in the draft, but for whatever reason, failed to live up to expectations. He got way bigger in college than his joints would carry. Edmund, outstanding, a 280-pound tackle. Number 10, Tony Mandarich. He was a good player for a period of time in Indianapolis, but initially with Green Bay, he was a major disappointment. The Green Bay Packers took Mandarich with the second overall pick in the 89 draft, overlooking future Hall of Famers Barry Sanders, Derek Thomas, and Deion Sanders. You're not supposed to be as strong as I am. You're not supposed to be as fast as I am. You're not supposed to be as good as I am. Analysts and scouts pegged Mandarich as a blue chip prospect who would become an elite NFL offensive lineman, with Sports Illustrated going so far as to call him, quote, the best offensive line prospect ever. Everybody had him rated the highest lineman they've ever graded. It wasn't like one, two, three, four guys like, oh, those foolish Packers, everybody. Sadly, problems with attitude and substance abuse prevented him from reaching his full potential. After being cut by the Packers, he was checked into rehab for drug and alcohol addiction and eventually got sober. Part of the 12-step program is to make amends for the things that you did wrong. So I thought to myself, how in the world do you make amends for the disaster you created in the NFL? He made a brief comeback when he returned to the NFL with the Indianapolis Colts, but had limited success before a shoulder injury forced his retirement in 1998. If you've been described in your college career as an all-time great, how can you fail? Number nine, Heath Schuler. So much pressure, so much money, so much time put into a guy, and then you flop. Schuler was selected third overall by the Washington Redskins at the 1994 NFL Draft. The franchise had a rough time since their successful run in Super Bowl 26, so Schuler was brought in to rejuvenate the team in the quarterback department. However, he was eventually replaced by seventh round selection Gus Farratt. Despite signing a seven-year deal with the Redskins worth over $19 million, Schuler only lasted three seasons in Washington and started only 18 games in that span. At the next level, he was having trouble adjusting to defenses and, and actually learning offenses. In his career, he passed for only 15 touchdowns and threw 33 picks. Throwing that many interceptions in such a short career would almost be impressive if it weren't so disappointing. Redskins have made some bad choices over the years, but this was one of the worst. Number eight, Kijana Carter. With the first pick in the draft, the Cincinnati Bengals have selected running back from Penn State, Kajana Carter. A promising prospect and incredibly talented running back with Penn State at the college level, Carter finished second in votes in the 1994 Heisman Trophy race. The Bengals traded with Carolina for the first pick in the 1995 draft just to have Carter on their squad and offered him an unprecedented $19 million deal with a $7 million signing bonus, setting the NFL record at the time for a rookie contract. As you can probably guess, the Bengals' hefty investment did not pan out, however, and Carter was cursed with the injury bug throughout his short career. He was someone that just got hit by the injury bug and couldn't shake it. It was like one injury after another injury. He missed his entire rookie season due to an injury sustained in a preseason game and ended up starting just 14 games in his five seasons as a Bengal. You look at the draft, say, oh, well, look at that guy. Look where he was taken and he never made it, but in fairness to him, it wasn't his fault. Number seven, Courtney Brown. First choice in the NFL draft, the Cleveland Browns select Courtney Brown. Who? Courtney Brown? As a Penn State Nittany Lion, Brown set the then NCAA record for career sacks with 33. And a tip by Courtney Brown and intercepted. Can Breeze get to him? No! Touchdown, Courtney Brown! When the Cleveland Browns selected him with the first overall pick, what they expected was the record-shattering pass-rushing powerhouse they saw in the game film from his college days. In reality, they ended up with an injury-prone bust who only managed 17 sacks wearing a Browns uniform. For raw talent, he was one of the quickest defensive ends I saw, and unfortunately with the injuries, we never had a chance to see the sustained quickness. His career ended a year after he left the Browns to join the Denver Broncos, where he played in 14 games 
games and recorded just two sacks before calling it quits. He doesn't have that intensity, that drive, that will to dominate football games with the God-given talent that he clearly still has. Number six, Tim Couch. The Cleveland Browns selection is from the University of Kentucky quarterback Tim Couch. The Browns selected Couch with the first overall pick in the 1999 draft and expected him to help build the franchise into a bona fide playoff contender. But with a mediocre offensive line protecting him, Couch's career was plagued with injury upon injury. He came to an expansion football team that was going to suffer for a while, and I think the fact that Tim got beat up certainly caused him to lose some of his confidence. He started all 16 regular season games in only one of his five seasons as a Cleveland Brown. Couch dropping, throws, it is intercepted! Even with a healthy couch at the helm for all of those games, the Browns missed the playoffs and could only muster a 7-9 and nine record. When he got to the NFL and the game became a bit more sophisticated, he just did not have the wherewithal to deal with that. Despite the occasional spark of brilliance, Couch never managed to reach the level of play expected of him and was cut by the Browns in 2004. I really like playing at Cleveland. I mm -hmm. think um, they, they got a great organization. I could, uh, they got a great coach that's uh, specialized in dealing with quarterbacks, and I think I could uh, really benefit. Number five, Lawrence Phillips. On the field, Nebraska's running back Lawrence Phillips was all but unstoppable. Off the field, he was, well, all but unstoppable. After a number of teams passed on Phillips in the 1996 draft due to his college-era off-field issues, the talented running back prospect fell to the Rams, who took him with the sixth overall pick. So you bring him in, and you want your city to embrace him, when in fact they should be picketing. Unfortunately for both the Rams and Phillips, those same off-field issues that plagued his college career followed him to the pros. He spent 23 days in prison while still a member of the Rams organization, and was eventually and unexpectedly released by the team after a dispute resulting from his demotion to second string running back. He got second chances, he got third chances. People were always trying to help him, and what a colossal waste of talent. While his potential and athletic ability were undeniable, he was never truly able to overcome his troubled past. And he committed suicide in January 2016 after being charged with first degree murder. We're done talking about unrealized uh, potential. Uh, we want to talk about what he did accomplish and celebrate uh, the, all of the good things that he, that he did do. Number four, Akili Smith. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Picked third in the 1999 draft, Smith was a bit of a gamble for the Bengals considering he'd only played a single successful season of college ball with the Oregon Ducks. The Bengals could have traded their first round pick to the New Orleans Saints in exchange for nine draft picks over two years, but they turned down the offer to draft Smith. He went on to start just 17 games and threw five TD passes in his four years in Cincinnati before being released in 2002. Smith tried to continue his career with a few other teams, including the Frankfurt Galaxy in NFL Europe and the Calgary Stampeders in the CFL, but he failed to find a role with either of them. I'm starting to learn in the CFL, it doesn't matter how much you're down until the, the time is off the clock, so we still felt we was in that game, we just didn't get it done. Number three, Charles Rogers. Oh. Charles Rogers has 68 catches and 13 touchdowns. As an All-American college athlete coming out of Michigan State, all eyes were on Charles Rogers at the 2003 draft. Rogers, <laughs> race to the end zone. During his college years with the Spartans, he broke a number of NCAA and school records, including Randy Moss's record of 13 straight games completing a touchdown catch. Look at the 68 yard play, it was a blitz. The Lions selected Rogers second overall with high hopes, with analysts and pundits comparing him to Moss. However, injuries and suspensions limited Rodgers to only 15 games played in his three seasons with the Lions. He only managed 36 catches and 440 yards in that span before he was cut by the Lions in 2006. Pressure going to be there. Um, either you can live up to it, you know, or you can't, you know, I failed to do that. Number two, Jamarcus Russell. With the first pick in the 
2007 NFL Draft. The Oakland Raiders select quarterback Jamarcus Russell, LSU. Selected first overall in the 2007 draft by the Oakland Raiders, Jamarcus Russell was held out of training camp due to contract negotiations, eventually signing a six-year, $68 million contract with over $31 million guaranteed. The magnifying glass was so big on Jamarcus and the expectations were so high, you know, unfairly high because it's not, it's not his fault that he was paid that money. Considering the Raiders' decision to cut Russell in 2010 after throwing for 23 career interceptions and only 18 touchdowns, they probably want some of that money back. Russell was a dominant college quarterback at Louisiana State University and was compared to other successful big body pros like Ben Roethlisberger. Despite high expectations, Russell did little to elevate the Raiders from their bottom of the league status and is currently begging teams to give him another shot. To be a young kid and having so much on your plate as far as everybody who's in the Raiders organization, like their life is in your hand. And on the other hand, I had my life and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't go together. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. In the NFL, the publicity came first. The performance never equaled what happened in Oklahoma. I don't think his career was ever the same when Bo Jackson ran him over for a touchdown. I mean, you saw that he had that kind of sleek body and speed, but it never did translate into the NFL. The Houston Texans select David Carr, quarterback from Fresno State. Can you pull that here? It's not like this is a surprise. 24 and 44 in his career. Second overall pick by the Seahawks in 93. He collected a lot of NFL helmets. Though. There are a lot of Heisman Trophy winners who did not do particularly well in the National Football League, but I can't remember one who was such an unmitigated bust. Number one, Ryan Lee. The San Diego Chargers select quarterback, Washington State University, Ryan Leaf. After winning his first two games as a Charger, the San Diego fan base may have thought their second overall pick in the 1998 draft was the real deal franchise quarterback they desperately needed. Fumble by Ryan Leaf. Unfortunately, Leaf threw for two interceptions and four fumbles in his third game against the Kansas City Chiefs, and it was all downhill from there. You don't talk to me, all right? Knock it off! Locker room drama, spats with the media, and late nights of partying didn't help his relationships with his teammates, coaches, fans, or front office. And he was promptly released after turning the Chargers into the worst team in the league. Ryan Leaf is the quintessential best. He was supposed to be the savior of a franchise. They mortgaged their future and changed the whole culture of their franchise to get him. In three seasons as the Chargers' starting quarterback, Leaf only managed four wins, total. It's very sad to see someone who was extraordinarily physically gifted, had achieved financial security, was in an ideal location, and due to inner demons, it didn't work out. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think are the worst draft picks in NFL history? He'll be remembered for his college greatness and his disappearing act in the NFL. For more exciting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You heard me, you heard all the